So you have the birth of the unconquerable son, December 25th, right? The dies Natalus, the sole invictus, celebrated by Marcus Aurelius, a Roman uh, general. Um, so the, how that actually happened was the sun would just stay in the sky for about three days during the winter solstice, and then the days actually start getting bigger afterwards. So it's the smallest day in the year. I think it's only like nine hours, and it's, it happens at one specific moment. Um, but it looks like the sun just stays stationary in, in the uh, sky for three days because it's like going to change direction. And um, and so back to the ancients, they would see that the this, this sun was, you know, I forget how it actually was moving, but it was like moving in some direction and then it just stops. And they're like, oh no, what's going to happen? Is it just going to fall off the sky? And then it, like, it goes back, right? And then it starts... Uh, um, the days get longer, so that's when the birth of the unconquered sun happens. So the days are getting smaller and smaller and smaller, then eventually the sun is in the sky, and it's like, no, and it fights back, and then it gets bigger. So it's a rebirth. There's three days, and there's a rebirth that happens. So the sun god, the son of God, Jesus is the son of God. Um, Sunday, right, we celebrate Sabbath on a Sunday. And then there's a uh, Saturn, uh, Saturday. We they used to be Saturnalia, Saturday, the celebration of Saturn, Saturn Day, Saturday. Um, this some of this shit's pretty fucking remarkable because it's embedded in our culture, and virtually all the fucking holidays are bullshit and complete fucking lies. But everybody goes along with them as if there's something to them, and it doesn't make any sense at all. So. Um, you always have the popular Greek god Dionysus, right? He was born on December 25th. He was the god of the grape harvest, wine making and wine, ritual madness and ecstasy in Greek mythology. Dionysus may have been worshipped as early as 1500 to 1100 BC by the Mycenaean Greeks. So the Mycenaean Greeks were worshipping Dionysus. Other traces of the Dionysian type cult have been found in ancient Minoan Crete. His origins are uncertain and his cults took many forms. Some are described by ancient sources as Thracian and others are uncertain. His cults took many forms. Some are described by ancient sources as what the fuck? Um, whatever. In some cults he arrives from the east as an Asiatic foreigner. Dionysus does and others from Ethiopia in the south. He's a god of, the, of Epiphany. The God that comes, his foreignness as a arriving outsider God may be inherent and essential to his cult. He's a major popular figure in Greek mythology and religion. And I'm sucking at reading this. And is included in some lists of the 12 Olympians. Dionysus was the last God to be accepted on the Mount Olympus. He's the youngest and the only one to have a mortal mother. His festivals were the driving force behind the development of Greek theater. He is an example of a dying god. The earliest cult images of Dionysus show a mature male, bearded and robed. He holds a fennel staff tipped with a pine cone, uh, known as a thra thyrus thyrsus. Later images show him as a beardless, sensuous, naked or half-naked androgynous youth. The literature describes him as womanly. Uh, or man woman womanish in its fully developed form, his central cult imagery shows his triumphant, disorderly arrival or return, as if from someplace beyond the borders of the known and civilized. His procession, Theasius, is made up of wild female followers, maenads, and bearded satyrs with erect penises. Some are armed with the thoracus. Some dance or play music. <laughs> what the fuck? Center claws. Later, Santa Claus, of course, was distantly related to St. Nicholas, but he was also related to the Norse god Odin. St. Nicholas was a gift giver and lots of other things. As one of the most popular Christian saints, he's associated with nearly everything. He was often depicted with a long white beard, but so was Odin, and so was Father Time, Father Saturn, Santa. Odin rode a horse, much like the early Cinder Claus. By the time Cinder Claus came to the United States, he was no longer a... Uh, God or a saint, Clement Moore, in the night before Christmas, to described him as a jolly old elf. So actually, Santa is an elf, right? Just bigger and fatter and human-looking than all the other elves in his workshop. Eventually, St. Nick 
of the poem in the Center Claus of Dutch legend simply became Santa Claus, the Winter Solstice, Scandinavian Norseman, Yule, 12 days uh, celebration of Yule, Yule log, a large log was lit on fire, kept burning for 12 days, human and animal sacrifices were done, witchcraft, Dionysus, Baal, chief god, pagan god from Persia, Mithras, born on December 25th, god of the unconquerable sun, worshipped by Roman cult into the long nights, returned to the dominance of the sun, December 17th to the 24th, culminating December 25th, Roman orgy to end all orgies. This is Saturnalia, Santa Claus. Puritans made the celebration of Christmas illegal because of all the debauchery that Saturnalia and Christ mass from England carried along with it. Christmas comes from ancient Babylon and pagan Rome, the reincarnation of Nimrod through Tammuz, Saturnalia, Roman god of time and harvest, the cruelest and most evil of all the pagan gods, Saturnalia, demanded child sacrifice, and the Jews worshipped Saturn. The Israelites offered their children to vile blood, thirsty god, gladiators spilled blood during Saturnalia. Gladiators couldn't wait to kill during Saturnalia. Religious celebration. All understood that all blood sacrificed by the gladiators were sacred gifts to Saturn, the sickle-bearing son of heaven. So, Father Saturn. Christmas trees were decorated with candles with or ornamental balls. The candles were made from the fat of the children who were sacrificed for Saturn. So, when you kill the kid, then you use the fat of the children to make candles. The balls are the symbolic representation of the heads of those sacrificed to Saturn. Carolyn, engaged in naked singers, engaged in licentious behavior. Father Christmas. So, you got Father Christmas, the Grim Reaper, Old Father Time. All these people are Saturn, the evil satanic god. Saturn was evil, okay? And so that's what all these uh, Christmas uh, pagan rituals come from. The celebration of Saturn. And to be honest with you, there's virtually all of the American holidays are completely bogus. They're completely bullshit. They're based on absolutely nothing or they're so devoid of uh, where they originally were from. They've been taken on an entirely new meaning. Just go down the line, you know, Groundhog's Day, Easter, uh, Thanksgiving, Halloween, Christmas, 4th of July. They're all a bunch of lies. It's all a bunch of bullshit. 4th of July didn't happen on the 4th of July. It happened on the 2nd of July. And um, it was only independence for rich white aristocracy. So the black folks, the Native Americans, women, and uh, young white males who were under 21 or did not own property were out of the republic. So that didn't benefit most people. So it wasn't independence for them. It was actually the it was slavery still for them. So, um, you know, St. Patrick's Day, uh, St. Valentine's Day, all these have lies are backed up with different festivals that are covering up to be different you know it's just all bullshit it's holidays holy days so it comes from the catholic church that's where all these holidays come from and uh there's the you know celebrate have a party for whoever you want to celebrate but know why you're celebrating it and um and yeah and that's it just uh know why you're celebrating and i think that would be a, a important first step so Santa Claus is based on St. Nicholas of Myra, who's a patron saint of bank and sale and orphans, royalty, pirating, butchery, thievery, New York City, 350 A.D. Pope Julius picked December 25th as Jesus' uh, Jesus's birthday. So they just picked it out of, like, out of a hat, right? 350 A.D. Pope Julius picked December 25th as Jesus' birthday. Um, even though nobody knows, it's probably in the fall. The man who wrote Headless Horseman wrote that St. Nicholas was flying in a weightless wagon. Christmas trees cut down evergreen tree put inside the house. Needles going all the carpet. The sap gets all over your fingers. Christmas trees presents in the dead of winter. We shouldn't be spending all of our surplus money, but instead, that's what we do. We waste our surplus money by other people's shit. Probably shit they already have or definitely didn't need. So they can be disappointed. We're disappointed. We keep these grins on our faces because, you know, it's not fake. None of, none of it's fake. Santa Claus is real. The Easter Bunny, Tooth Fairy, it's all real. Just as real as Jesus Christ, right, and God. The Easter Bunny rabbit who lays chicken eggs, even though no rabbit on earth lays any type of eggs, especially chicken eggs. You think rabbits lay chicken eggs? Rabbits give live birth just like humans. And if you think rabbits have chicken eggs, then what do you think makes baby chickens? Elephants? The Tooth Fairy? St. Valentine? St. Patrick, St. Nicholas, the 4th of July, 
the aspect of transference, the Old Testament. Joseph is a prototype for Jesus, born of a miracle birth of 12 brothers. Joseph sold for 20 pieces of silver. Brother Judah suggests the sale of Joseph. Joseph began work at the age of 30. Christian religion is a parody on the worship of the Son in which they put a man called Christ in the place of the Son and pay him the adoration or originally paid to the Son. Thomas Paine, 325 A.D., the Catholic Church for 1,600 years reigned hell in Europe. The Spanish Inquisition, the Crusades, the Dark Ages, Catholic Church pulled dick moves on Europe. European imperialists in turn pulled dick moves on the rest of the world. Religion can never reform mankind because religion is blood and death, genocide, war, and slavery, all which come by merely because freedom-loving humans seem to have a resilient penchant for blind submission to authority. Mithras, right, born December 25th, 1 AD, complicated seven-step way to become Mithras. Many temples had lots of gods. Saturn teaches you a lesson, will take your life if you do not listen to him. So he was an angry, vengeful god, Saturn was. Saturn was religion of the Phoenician Canaanite. Most important god in the ancient world long before Hebrews and Canaan. Then of course there's Krampus, evil Santa doppelganger that went around with Santa to punish the bad children. Right? Santa give presents to the good kids. Well, what happened to the bad kids? Well, that's where Krampus comes in. Krampus has devil horns. It looks like the devil. Europeans are familiar with him, but Americans have not heard of him. And he goes around punishing the bad children. So the good ones get presents, but Krampus comes in and, and eats your soul. <laughs> During Saturnalia in ancient Rome, all courts were shut down and basically all crimes were allowed. It was a massive Roman orgy to end all orgies. There was cross-dressing, homosexuality, pedophilia. 90% of the Jew Jewish worship is the planet of Saturnalia. The Holy Sabbath is actually the worship of the planet Saturn. If you keep the Sabbath, then you're carrying on the ancient worship of this pagan god. This is why he is worshipped on Saturn's day, which we call today Saturday. But since we're Christians, we don't worship Saturn, the planet, on Saturn's day, on Saturday. That's stupid. We worship on Sunday. Because we worship the sun, and the sun is way bigger than Saturn. So, it's just like the pagans have done for years. We carried out Gil Gilgamesh was a popular sun god. So, Gilgamesh, um, the Epic of Gilgamesh, you had the Noah's Flood was already written in the Epic of Gilgamesh. Many pagan gods were born of a virgin. I wonder if Gilgamesh was actually born on December 25th also. Many pagan gods were born of a virgin, born on 25th, followed a star in the east, had three kings pay homage at birth. Was a teacher, 12 year old, uh, had 12 disciples, started ministry at 30, performed miracles, crucified, dead for three days, and then resurrected. Many of them had the exact same attributes as uh, Jesus the Christ. So the there's a myth, the 2250 BC, Sargon was born of a virgin, and Perseus too. Both are put in a box, thrown in a river or sea, just like Moses. They were raised by strangers. Moses has many similarities to Jesus. The Egyptian god Horus was the god of war, revenge, protection, and the sun. So Horus was born December 25th. Horus was born of a virgin, a star in the east, adorned by three kings, teacher at 12, baptized, had a ministry at 30. Miracles included healed the sick, the, healed the sick walked on water, had 12 disciples. Egypt, 3000 BC, Lamb of God, the light, the good shepherd, Right, dead for three days, resurrected. Horus was baptized by Anup, the baptizer, the uh, god of sun and war, as a man with a falcon head. Written in 1280 BC, the Book of the Dead describes a god, Horus. Horus is the son of the god Osiris, born to a virgin mother. He was baptized in a river by Anup, the baptizer, who was later beheaded. Like Jesus, Horus was tempted while alone in the desert, attempted. Um, uh, uh, healed the sick. He was able to heal the sick. The blind cast out demons and walked on water. He raised Asar from the dead. Asar translates to Lazarus. Oh yeah, he had 12 disciples. Yes, Horus was crucified first and after three days, two women announced Horus the Savior of humanity had been resurrected. The mother of Horus was believed to be the goddess Isis. Her husband, the god Osiris, was killed by his enemy Seth. The god of the desert and later dismembered, Isis managed to retrieve all of Osiris' body parts except for his phallus, which was thrown into the Nile and eaten by catfish. I'm not making any of this up. Isis used her goddess powers to temporarily resurrect Osiris and fashion a golden phallus. She was then impregnated and Horus was conceived, you know, just like Jesus. Um, Addis, the ancient fire 
Frigo, Roman, uh, God Attis. Attis was born of a virgin in Greece, 1200 BC. Attis had died three days later, was resurrected. He was born on December 25th, A-T-T-I-S. The ancient Frigo, Roman God Attis, is depicted as having been born of a virgin mother on December 25th, being killed and resurrected and afterwards. Here we shall examine the evidence for these contentions which parallel the gospel story. Christian tradition concerning Jesus the Christ, providing a summary of the mythos and rituals of Attis along with comparisons to Christian tradition, professor of classics and ancient history at the University of Manchester, Dr. Andrew T. Fear states the 